Perfect. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. I am Anita Cooper. This is Nicholas Shepard. Uh, we just wanted to meet with you guys today to talk to you about something that most businesses are not aware of, which is uh, the bonus, the business executive plans. We're going to have to, since you're going to stand on me. <laughs> Did you do that? <laughs> right, right. He stood, he stood up on you guys. <laughs> So uh, this is just something that we really want uh, to get out in Pueblo, uh, in our community, because it's something that most people are not aware of. Um, I've been in business for over 30 years. I'll let Nicholas uh, tell what his background is. I've been in business over 30 years. I moved here to Pueblo just a couple of years ago. And one of the things that I've just been really amazed at is the lack of knowledge uh, when it comes to finances. Pueblo is a, a community that is very high in poverty. A lot of resources in this community are dependent on, on like on the government funding. So what does that tell me as a financial uh, consultant and a, an insurance agent? It tells me there is a lack of financial education in this town as well. May have a lot of people here, but the resources and the understanding of how to properly allocate, especially for small businesses, properly allocate your funding, where to save, how to save, um, and to put yourself in a position where you're not overpaying in taxes is actually very important. So I am going to introduce my better half here uh, to kind of explain to you how we can start transitioning as business owners, how we can start transitioning uh, the learning curve and transitioning our businesses uh, to start living in more of abundance instead of poverty. Um, Nicholas has an amazing background himself. He's been actually uh, educating himself since out of professional sports uh, in the financial arena, just simply because as a professional athlete, having tons and tons of money on the contracts, this is actually information that was not taught to him as a professional athlete. So he has a heart and a passion about uh, securing people financially, and I am so glad that we are on this journey together. Yes. And without any further ado, Mr. Nicholas Shepard. All right, well, thank you, thank you. Um, again, as I said, so money is my choice. Uh, this is love background, as like she said. I played professional sports for eight years. Um, I did everything on my own. I was the first generation of being able to be in that position. Um, so financial services and financial understanding uh, was one of my main things that I know that I had to basically understand. Um, so so nobody would be able to steal any money, uh, put it anywhere where I didn't know. And then also, um, I've always been a person thinking about legacy. Uh, what am I going to be able to leave to my kids uh, or even people that, you know, associated with what I do? Um, so as she stated, I, after I was done um, with sports, uh, I really did go deep into understanding what being around those people um, being around the owners and the check writers and um, the people that actually talked about money, uh, how to build a team and what that looks like. So I, again, as I said, I wanted to understand um, where my money was going and how to invest my money. Um, I really didn't get a chance to do it the way that I wanted to uh, because, again, it was all self-taught knowledge. Uh, after I, I retired, that's when I uh, kind of went went into more of the financial services uh, investment. I actually came into, into, into our life uh, because of uh, looking for better vehicles uh, for investment. Um, and as I say, abundance by choice. It really is now uh, for business owners. Uh, it's really a choice right now. How do you want to um, give incentives to your employees? Uh, how do you give incentives to uh, people wanting to work for you. How, how are you looking at the overall picture uh, of their retirement and how much you really want to be able to uh, take care of your employees? Um, COVID changed, changed the whole game uh, of, of, of what the job is for a person. Uh, if the person doesn't feel uh, wanted or valuable uh, to your business, 
um, that that allows them the ability to say, well, I don't want to work there. I don't want to spend my time to help you build your business. Uh, yet, if you have incentive um, that's more geared to the employee, uh, it allows them to, to feel significant. So that's why we really uh, talk about uh, these executive bonus plans. Um, yet also, our mission is to help. Let's move this up, up a little bit. Our mission is to help and grow our clients, their assets, and all three dimensions of authentic wealth, uh, not just financial, uh, but foundational and intellectual, uh, because that is uh, what is truly leading, um, what it is to truly lead an abundant life. Uh, we have to be balanced in all areas. Uh, now we have to be multifaceted, uh, not just looking at what finances are. Uh, we have to leave a foundation, uh, our qualities and our values. Uh, to to the people that we want to be able to work with and for our future. Uh, and then the intellectual stuff is all the things that we've learned. We've got to be able to, to transfer to the next generation so that they can actually have a, a greater foothold and understand of what they uh, needed to do as this, uh, as this world is continuing to change. Yeah. <laughs> This cool <laughs> so as we know, there's uh, 3 point, 32 million small businesses here in the United States. 99% uh, of those firms have fewer than 500 employees. Uh, the U.S. also, we employ over six, 61 million people. Um, and that's so there's 48, 48 to 46% of, uh, of that is private workforce, which is small businesses. Small businesses really run the country. So how do we get, get a chance to rebuild the our businesses and put those incentives uh, into being able to recruit, reward, and retain employees. So yeah, so we're here for key employees, I mean key persons and uh, executive bonuses. Um, what are the differences in between those two? Go through the process. Um, key employees, uh, key persons, the employer owns the policy. Uh, the employer is the beneficiary. The employee pays the premium. Uh, the employer has no right to the policy. Uh, and the employer cannot deduct the premium uh, from them. But the employer must get consent first uh, in order for them to get the, the policy on that key person that they're looking for. Uh, the executive bonus is a little bit different. The executive bonus, the employee owns the policy. The, uh, and the employee selects its beneficiary uh, from once they choose to go to, uh, to get that out. The employee pays the premium. Uh, the employee owns the premium, but the employer gets to deduct the premium out of his uh, compensation, if that makes sense, so that the exit can be paid for. And then the uh, employee pays the taxes on the premium. Also, we'll get uh, into that, what those two sections will look like. Uh, the basis of the Section 162 Executive Bonus Plan, as a business entity, um, there are many benefits from the executive bonus plan installed for the executive who does not have ownership in the company. Uh, again, this goes because the, what, what's what's the key employee? Key employee is somebody that you can't do do without. Uh, that's the top of the of this class, uh, bringing in revenue for your company. So if you would lose that person, uh, then you would your, your business wouldn't function as it needs to. Um, the business business owner. You may also benefit from the executive bonus plan uh, where the company is, is structured as a C-Corp. Uh, small businesses find qualified plans too expensive to administer and may benefit from the executive bonus plan as an alternative to qualified plans. Uh, large businesses are that are restricted as they uh, can offer uh, their executive due to a qualified plan limitations. Some of those plans now uh, that these larger companies have, or even some of the smaller companies have, uh, do not fit the parameters to be able to give the benefits uh, that you may want to be able to give to the employee. Uh, businesses organized as pass-through entities such as S-Corps, uh, LLCs, and sole proprietors do not pay taxes through the executive bonus plan provides a very little uh, tax leverage uh, for the majority owner, yet it can still benefit the non-majority uh, owner. Uh, being able to get the uh, opportunity. 
So a lot of people, if they have like an LLC or a S Corp, they may say, well, I'm already in somewhat of a tax exempt uh, bracket. Um, however, uh, you put you put them. Um, it's not so much tax exempt because over a certain amount, then they then they are starting to look at some some different um, areas in their taxes, right? Um, but with the executive bonus plans, regardless whether they're an LLC, an S corp, or a major corporation, uh, these uh, executive bonus plans just really add a nice little cushion uh, to the taxes. So you're right. What is an executive bonus plan? It's also known as a Section 162 plan. Uh, it is a non-qualified employee benefits benefit arrangement, which the employer provides life insurance for selected employees. Under this type of arrangement, the employer, employee owns the policy um, that insures their life and names their personal beneficiary. The employer provides the funding for the policy, policy premium, and pays the premium directly to the insurance company. Uh, so again, we'll get to what those a couple of options are. Okay, so when I, we're talking on the executive bonus and the life insurance plan. So I wanted to just kind of go over real quick what exactly that life insurance plan holds. It's not your traditional life insurance, okay? It is going to be a, a benefit that if they die too soon, if they become ill or injured, seriously injured, or they live too long, this policy is going to be able to be act, utilized by them while they're still alive. Now, that's a game changer. And most people aren't aware of the living benefit policies. Now, the executive bonus plans that we offer uh, include these living benefits. Now, what does that mean to you as a business owner? Uh, you have your key employee uh, who is it, who gets injured, who gets sick. Maybe you're the only employee of your business and you get injured and sick. Well, you can access 90% of that death benefit while you're still alive. That's a game changer. You have a million dollar policy. Something happens to you where you do not die. That's $900,000, up to $900,000 you can use while you're still alive. So now uh, the coverage is off of death and now it's on to living. It can prevent you from bankruptcies, foreclosures, losing your home, losing your car, going into debt, you're able to pay off your medical bills, get special treatment, uh, pay up your house, pay off your house, do whatever you need to do to elim eliminate the financial stress and burden while you can you know, go through your recovery. Remember, so it's an amazing thing. I was gonna say, remember it's tax-free. <laughs> it is tax-free, so that lump sum uh, is due to the tax codes and, and the areas um, within the uh, IULs. Uh, to allow that to happen. Correct. Um, again, this is another kind of simplification of executive bonus. Again, it's a way that the business owner and companies can provide fringe benefits to key executives of their choice. Um, adding fringe benefits may include an IUL that provides a valuable death benefit as well as a cash value accumulation that can be used as a retirement income supplement. Because again, everybody's trying to figure out what am I gonna do when I'm done? What type of money and I'm am, am I going to be able to live off of? Uh, and this gives you an option to kind of decide and dictate that um, of how you want your retirement money uh, to look like and what you want your retirement to look like and using the vehicle to do that. Uh, the company can use tax deductible company funds to select the uh, selectively provided value benefits to key employees. When used effectively, an executive bonus plan can be a valuable tool to attract and retain employees. So real quick before you go to the next slide, just also wanted to show um, the difference because some, some people may say, this sounds like a 401k, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the difference between what we offer in the 401k is a 401k is attached to the market. Okay. So it depends. It's uh, if the market is good, your, your 401k is good. If the market is bad, you lose, right? So you have a uh, risk when it comes to the 401ks with our policies and, and what you're giving your employees, whether you're your own key employee or whether you have employees, you're giving them all the upside gains of the market with no downside risk. So these uh, these cash accumulating policies, they grow with the market. 
And so as the market grain, uh, gains, you gain. But we have a zero floor protection. Zero is the hero when it comes to these policies, right? Um, so um, for example, you know, we have a little uh, illustration here of the, the equity of the index. Um, and when, when the market crashes, in a 401k, your money is completely lost. But as you can see, when the market crashes in the policies that we're talking about and that we secure our employers um, with, our employees with, is there's a downside protection all the way. So it's another incentive um, that what you're setting your clients for, and it's a tax-free retirement. <laughs> also, can't say enough about tax-free. No, definitely can't. It also helps you stand out uh, and set yourself apart. Uh, from the competition by providing meaningful benefits to you and your employer. Yeah, so what are you, what are the uses here? Uh, as we stated, a, a free, I don't say free, a tax-free <laughs> death benefit, <laughs> uh, potential to tax deferred cash value. Um, that part, that's the part of the cash accumulation piece. Uh, that's the dove into the IUL. Uh, potential for retirement income. Uh, through a tax-free loan and withdrawals. Um, and we'll get to that also a little bit later. Uh, accelerated benefits in the event of a qualified terminal, chronic, or critical illness or critical uh, injury uh, placed on the job or uh, anything upon that nature and deductibles as compensation also. Take it off the, the Zoom three. There you go. You may use these uh, business dollars uh, to reward yourself and your key employees uh, with a bonus plan that uses the power of the Section 162 bonus plan. So how many in the room have heard of Section 162? <laughs> Which is why we do what we do. <laughs> I was watching something the other day and it said that the government, the reason why they don't really talk about these things is because they have tight advertising uh, limitations on these and on the insurance companies. Uh, to provide the benefits um, to those to, to, to the employees. This is exactly the bonus plan. It's definitely easy to implement. Uh, the company provides the key executive with the bonus uh, that is considered a reasonable compensation, which is the taxable income to the key uh, executive at their current tax bracket. Uh, the bonuses uh, amount is used to purchase the IUL by the key executive that provides death benefits protection and bills cash value and growth through tax deferred uh where are we at sorry yes, tax deferred takes. in some cases the company will pay the uh, IUL premium directly to the insurance company uh the bonus amount is generally deducted uh business expenses for the company at its current tax bracket providing all the compensation including the bonus is a reasonable um and the company does not retain the ownership of the benefit of the uh, IUL. And also say again, death benefit is also attached to that and the proceeds are income tax-free. Tax-free. <laughs> you gotta love tax-free. I think, I think we all uh, have, to, have to enjoy that. What, what is a reasonable compensation? Reasonable is based on the following. The contribution and duties performed by the key employees are critical for the success of the business, the size and the operational success of the business also, the compensation standards of the industry in which the business is operated. Variations of the executive bonus plan. All right, so we have a double bonus agreement. In this double bonus, the company will provide the key executive with a bonus large enough to pay the IUL premiums as well as the income tax incurred by the key executive uh, as a bonus amount. The double bonus arrangement eliminates any out-of-pocket expenses for the ex key executive. Okay? And then the restricted or controlled executive bonus. Under the restricted or controlled executive bonus, the company retains some of the control and the key employee has access to the IUL's cash value uh, while employed there. The company and key executive enter into an agreement in which a vesting schedule uh, of the IUL's cash value, which is basically just gives the company a golden handcuff 
uh, which basically says, okay, you got to stay here for this amount of time in order to receive the benefit of your uh, executive bonus. So the employer also determines the length of the time. So if you want that employee for 10 to 15 years, if you want that employee for 20 years, then when the policy is written, it is the employer who makes the decision, the business owner that makes the decision, how long do I want to offer this? Now, of course, the longer that employer, the employee is with you, you're going to be able to have greater cash accumulation. They're going to be able to have a greater tax-free retirement, which is what we all want, right? Uh, to retire with dignity. And um, I do want to mention um, there was an article that was released uh, saying that Social Security Administration is going to be bankrupt by 2035. 2035, possibly within the next 10 years. So none of us in this room, and I'm almost 50, it will not be here for me at my retirement age. The Social Security that you're paying into at this point in time in your checks, that money is not going to be there for you. And this is just a harsh reality that we have to educate our people on. So what we're doing today and every day that we get before businesses is we're educating you. This is your fiduciary responsibility to secure your own personal retirement plan. And this is what we're saying as a business owner Okay, you're you're uh if you're already set up with the 401k for your employees, you're doing them a disservice. Because that 401k actually that money is going to be gone and they do not get to recoup that. What happens to their retirement? Now they're the elderly people reading us at Walmart and Home Depot. They're the elderly people that should be living their life in abundance, but they're out having to work beyond their retirement years just to make ends meet. And this is a harsh reality that we all have to uh, accept. But this is the amazing magic in the policies that we offer. You are securing your own personal, and even if it's not in a uh, executive bonus plan, you need to also have an IUL policy for yourself because that IUL plan for just an individual comes with the same benefits, which is a tax-free retirement. You get to um, have coverage for if you live too long, die too soon, or, you know, become seriously, critically, chronically injured uh, while living, you will be able to access that money along the way. So just, I just feel like that's something we need to always um, emphasize on because within the next 10 years, the reality in our lifetime is that the Social Security Administration and Social Security, as we've known it to be as a retirement plan, will not be there for us. No, I think it's, it's, that's, that's a great point. Um, as this reset happened, as we change from uh, what normality looks like, it's no, it's no longer normal. Um, and also the ability for you guys uh, and for myself to take, to take on uh, my financial fiduciary responsibility where I'm not placing my, my financial future in somebody else's hand, or I'm waiting for them uh, to say that, okay, well, um, I'll have social security as the state, so I'll have uh, uh, those incomes coming in once I'm done. Well, why wouldn't you set yourself up with this vehicle um, to basically take control of your own uh, future? Advantages of the executive bonus plan. Uh, as it states, it's simple to imp implement and it's easy to administer. Uh, the company can the company can selectively choose their key executive uh, who they wish to give the rewards to. Um, the bonus amount may be considered a full deductible expense uh, for the company. Uh, the key executive is uh, is able to name their beneficiary and the and of the entire death benefit of the IUL unless they are restricted um, or have, has a controlled business plan uh, from the employer. Like the bonus plan are, are subject to contribution and uh, of restrictions uh, of the Internal Revenue Code for qualified pensions and also profit sharing plans. Um, do you all know the acronym of the IUL, what we're saying? 
It's an index universal life policy. So it's a life policy that has the cash accumulation and the tax growth uh, of the index. And it also has an attached death benefit. Some of the disadvantages uh, of the executive bonus plan, if you want to call that uh, disadvantages, <laughs> the company is unable to fully recover the cost of the IUL's death benefit since the key executive controls the IUL and the right uh, to name the beneficiary. The company retains no ownership rights or beneficial interest in the IUL. The executive bonus plan offers the company very little control of the IUL. Um, even if a restriction or a controlled executive bonus plan is used, it is only restricted to key employees' access to the cash value. That's the golden handcuff, uh, and the agreement comes in to where you actually, again, the employer has more control uh, to say, well, I need you to stay this long, these many years, in order to uh, have the cash value. The only thing is, like I said, if somebody, the employee decides to leave, that's it can keep the policy and the cash value once that happens. Um, the bonus is never recovered by the company, even if the key employee leaves, as I stated, uh, the, the company prior to vesting. The key executive must include any bonus amount on his or her taxable income. How does the executive bonus plan work? Let's say the company pays a $12,000 annual uh, bonus to a key employee. The company is able to deduct 12000 of that bonus amount as a business expense at the current tax bracket. The key executive will pay the income tax on the 12000 which is 12000 times 25%, which is the tax bracket uh, we usually get, equals 3000 of the income taxes. Key executive buys an IUL with the $12,000 bonus amount, which is provided a variable death benefit as well as cash accumulation that can be used as a retirement supplement or additional finances needed. The company can pay the premium directly to the insurance company. The company can use the double bonus arrangement by providing the key employee with the bonus to pay the income taxes. And that's completely optional. Proper disclosures, <laughs> which I actually like to disclose. <laughs> uh, this is a marketing concept not intended for legal or tax advice. Yet, nice to give tax advice because we actually we're also, uh, licensed. We're also licensed tax preparers. <laughs> uh, so being able to see both sides of the the angles and the benefits and the, the and the, the the ability to advise the taxes the right way um, gives us that advantage. Um, but again, just people that that may not know that's doing the presentation. Um, and I have all the tax advice or the tax things that they need to understand. So uh, we recommend that the company consults uh, with tax and legal services <laughs> for the market concepts. Uh, and neither the agent nor the insurance company uh, issuing the IUL can give legal or tax uh, advice. Uh, since the section 16, uh, 16 2 executive bonus plan forms, uh, a part of the key employee's overall compensation, it may be appropriate to include all the terms and benefits in the employee agreement. So I wanted to hit on this just a little bit. So when people go to their CPA, right, their CPA is an expert in taxes. They're an expert in advising their businesses on what to do, how to structure their business. Uh, they are advised and they are specialized in that particular area. A life insurance agent has all the specialties and knowledge of the insurance side. As a, uh, do we, we get into taxes first or the insurance? We were in the taxes first. Yeah. <laughs> we got licensed as tax agents first. Right. And uh, so in this, we never heard any of what we learned when we became life agents, right? Life producers. It was like, wow, yeah. it was like an eye opener. Like, why aren't they teaching this over here in the taxes? Because the two are a perfect marriage to one another. So 
when we got over into the life business and we understood why, because it's, it's two totally different worlds, but if you marriage the two, you give businesses the most amazing foundation and structure of their lives. You are able to give an individual who's just an LLC or just an individual alone uh, amazing information of how to structure their finances and to limit the taxes. And at this point in time with what the government is doing with our money, and I'm not anti-government by any means, but we're going bankrupt faster than we know. So having to pay extra taxes, having to pay extra into the social security, having to pay extra, um, robbing Peter to pay Paul, uh, it, it actually as a business owner becomes almost like a slap in the face. And so what we want to do, and that's why I feel like there's so many businesses that are having to close is because of the overhead and the fees, the taxes and fees. So if we can begin to save our business owners, like, okay, hey, let's sit down, let's uh, go through your, your financials, let's sit down and talk with your CPA. We want to talk with CPAs and let them know what we know so that they can better educate their clients. We don't want to take their clients from them, but we want to make sure they're servicing their clients the best they can. Well, basically make sure that everybody's equipped uh, with the information uh, to be able to, uh, like you said, have the retirement, have the tools that they need to reward, re retain, and recruit uh, better people for their businesses. So again, I call to action, those that are watching, uh, get in contact with the chambers. Uh, let's set up a meeting uh, so we can go through a needs analysis. Uh, so again, there are a couple of things that we do go through. Uh, we go through a needs analysis, uh, what's going on with your company, uh, where is your money at, uh, what type of long-term, because this is a long-term investment uh, for yourself. Uh, it's not a short-term fix for any, any any of the troubles that are going on. Yet, uh, we, we create a, a checklist that you can go through solve some things um, and be able to find the best option that fits uh, and that's affordable for you uh, and put a plan together. That's right now the biggest thing is uh, what type of plan can we put together uh, to go through that? Right. And so if you're a business and you're here, then you have uh, the form. If you're not, then get with us. Uh, if you're listening uh, via the web, um, and get with us and we can get you this form. So this is just like a little checklist, a retirement checklist. Now, if you're not a business and you've heard this and you're, you're like, I don't really have a retirement plan. I don't really have a backup. In 10 years, if the government's not there for me, who's going to be? You are, right? So then you need to go through this little needs analysis sheet. And this was for the personal ones, for those that see. And this just kind of uh, gives you an opportunity to say, okay, well, what are my debts? How much will I need? And then you always want to multiply this uh, by five, right? Because inflation times change. And let's say you get down to the bottom of this and you say, okay, well, after I filled out all of this information, the total here is 100,000. Well, 100,000 is not going to be enough to cover. You want to multiply that at least by three. You get a $300,000 policy. That's not overselling. And why do I say 300,000? Because you don't just say, what if I die? How much is my debt? You want to say, what if I live and something happens to me? How much am I going to need to live off of? How long am I going to need to live off of it? What if I live a really, really long time? Like my Uncle George that, <laughs> that lived into his 90s. How much money is it going to take me to live till 90? And are these questions that people are actually kind of prompting in your head? Um, I remember I was 27 years old when I had uh, got injured. I spent 13 years. I spent my entire 30s in a wheelchair, never thinking that my life would change that way. I was told I never walk again. I was 27 when it happened. I was 40 when I walked again. I was 42 when I had a heart attack. This stuff was not known to me. Now, here I was. I used to be a model. I was really skinny. I was healthy. I was active. Volleyball was my sport of choice. And I never would have thought that I would end up being 
a cripple. <laughs> and that's the way I saw myself for 13 years. I still battle with the nerve disease today. And um, and then when the heart attack came, I never saw, thought 42 years old, wow, my kids found me dead in a car. Thank God I was resuscitated. And thank God I changed some things about my life. But I could not predict what happened to me. And so this is why I say there's such a power in having living benefits because you guys are somewhere I wasn't. You have an opportunity to have the protection. Car accident, had one not even two weeks ago. Thank God it wasn't fat fatal or any worse. I could still be standing here today. But I could not predict that accident. I was parked at a gas pump and someone wrecked into me. You cannot predict when things are gonna happen. So this is why I say for everyone that's listening, for everyone that's here, you have an opportunity to protect yourself and it is only your responsibility to secure not only your business, your future, but your retirement as well and do it in a tax-free vehicle. You wanna give them some uh, contact information? Yes, uh, I, they do have my card. For those that are listening, you guys can reach us. It's at a very, very long email, but it's <laughs> Elevate Enterprises at Proton Mail. And it's E L E, and I think we'll put it in the clips, but E L E V, the number eight, T E E N T E R P R I S E S at protonmail.com. Very, very long. But um, you can also reach us at 719-225-0412. Now, that one's not as long. So <laughs> you guys can always call and set up an appointment. Uh, we do Zooms all day, every day. I do them up until 9 o'clock at night. If you just want to know what it looks like for you. Also, one other thing we did not mention. If you have children. Now is the time to get the IULs on children. This can be used to send them off to college. It can be used when they turn 18, get them their first car, send them out of your house as homeowners, not renters. Amazing, amazing. And the premiums are locked in. They never change. So the younger they are, the cheaper the premium, right? And the more that they'll be able to afford. Insurance is not bought with money. Insurance is bought with your bill. So that's why it's so important. I can't get a million dollars worth of insurance anymore. I was lucky to get 350000 after my incident because, because of the heart attack and because of the nerve damage, my health would not allow me to have a larger policy. I'm grateful for the three fifty. I'm grateful for that, but my health will not allow me to have a million. However, I have 13 grandchildren. I bet you they have a million. I set them up with a million dollars. I retired my grandchildren before they're old enough to work because we have to break the cycle of poverty in our families. And it starts with the children. And if something happens to the children, the children are diagnosed with something later on through life, that policy is there for them. They're injured during sports. That policy is there for them. And you'll never have to worry about the word social security with them because you would have secured their retirement way before they're old enough to work. And does anyone have any questions? <laughs> yes. Um, you guys are talking about the 162 executive bonus plan. Um, how do you... Like, like how, how do they get around it being tax free, I guess? Well, um, it goes by the the envelope of the death benefit. So yeah. this is how Trump was able to do what he what he does. This is why they can't put him in jail and they can't charge him with anything, right? Because he secured his finances within a death benefit. And there was this amazing little law that was made for the rich that kind of got out to protect them from having to pay taxes on their millions and billions of dollars. So anything that's tucked away within a death benefit, you're talking about index universal life, an annuity, a fixed index annuity, 
the IRAs uh, to a certain extent, those are tax deferred. Right. Um, but that's where you get the protection of the 162 tax code. It's clever. That's grandfathered in, basically. Um, that's over a hundred years um, that they actually created this type of insurance, if that makes sense. Uh, the executive bonus and the other pieces came along with that um, to actually get the tax benefits. Um, some of the tax code is 101B, 7202, and uh, it's one more tax oh, code. Uh, uh, 7202. 162 and there's also 164. Yeah, those are those are grandfather tax codes uh, that, that are part of the insurance. And another question. Yes. So uh, with the you said the 401ks or the social securities, the 2035. Yes. That's gonna end. So where does the money go for the people that have that social security now? Does it just go away? <laughs> well, it's being spent. I mean, if you think about it, that's money that's being spent. Where, where are they diverting or taking money from um, to do these other things and these other programs? Uh, it's in those taxes. The stimulus checks, the All economic impact from, checks. Yeah. Those are being repaid through Social Security, through the welfare systems. Those monies that they have allocated, they're going back and saying, we need to use this to pay this. So in actuality, if you got an EIP, if you got a stimulus, you just got a part of your future retirement. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. I mean, that's the conversation. Uh, I mean, how old are you? How old are you? 24. How old are you? 21. So you guys are in that stage, again, as you say, where none of that stuff is going to be, you can be dependent on. So it really, again, it goes back to how are you setting yourself up? How are you looking at other vehicles and avenues uh, to make sure that you're not worried about it, what, what the government is going to do, if that makes sense. Um, and again, I wish I would have had this type of conversation early enough to where I could have been in the position now where I'm, again, not just talking about it, but I can actually utilize the services. Um, and I already have my drawing upon that retirement. Draw it upon that 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 I ain't gonna say retirement, that supplemental income yeah. uh, outside of what you know I, I would have been able to put into the into the accounts early. Um and that's something to think about. Like what what stuff can you sacrifice uh of tangible materials? Because right now everybody's just consuming, 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 consuming. Uh yet how are you looking at the future for yourself? Uh how do you want yourself to be um, set up? Right now, those are real kind of tangible conversations that you have to have uh, to say, well, you're not going to be working. You're not trying to work all your life to, you know, have a measly check to check type of situation. So right now, this is a great time um, for us to be having that conversation. And that's so the that power of this up. needs analysis, too. OK, know what you can afford. Uh, average. Half million dollar policy for a twenty something year old is about two fifty a month. Yeah, um, roughly around that range. Just and and that and like I said, this this is your retirement plan. Any of you have worked long enough to even have a four hundred one k? Okay, stay that way. <laughs> don't don't do four hundred one k. So that two hundred and fifty dollars a month, if you had a four hundred one k, would be coming out of your check, right? Then you say, where can I uh, rearrange and